I'm Tom Grassi, a New York City comedian and diehard Green Bay Packers fan for almost 20 years. In 2015, I created a podcast where each week I talk to fans from opposing teams to share their story and to get yelled at for about an hour for being a Packers fan. Last year, I met amazing people and went to amazing places. And this year, I'm ready to do it all over again. Make no mistake about it, I will be remembered as a Packer. Enjoy the show. Grassy Posse Packer Nation, welcome to another episode of PackCast, the podcast where you don't have to be a Packers fan, but it sure does help. Well, that was the Super Bowl, and uh, I, I gotta say, I, I think it... I, I think it surpassed expectations. Now, it's the day after people are calling it the greatest Super Bowl of all time. I disagree with that completely, but uh, it was a, it turned out to be a damn good Super Bowl. The Patriots conquering the Atlanta Falcons 34-28. to Now, a score that a lot of people may have predicted, but the way that we got here uh, was anything but expected. In that this this first half of this game was a complete snooze fest, unless you were an Atlanta Falcons fan. In that this was, I thought I I accidentally TiVo'd the NFC Championship game, turned that on again, and was watching that first half because that's exact what the Falcons did to the Packers. They did the exact same thing to the Patriots, and I think everybody was like, "Oh damn." This, this team's actually good. Like, this is this is a for real team. Matt Ryan was doing well. Devontae Freeman was running through, over, under, everything on top of that Patriots defense. And they looked unstoppable that this was going to be a, a runaway game. There was no way that Brady could have caught up. Um, it, it started talking about the first half real quick. The first quarter w- was like, oh, man, this is going to be a defensive game. It's 0-0. Nobody's scoring. Uh, whoever had 0-0 for their boxes, you did well. But the the second quarter was really where it just opened up. The Falcons, they, Devontae Freeman goes in, gets a touchdown. Uh, quickly enough, it's 14-0 Falcons, and here come the Patriots. And you think they're going to drive down the field, they're going to score, this is going to become a game. And Tom Brady throws a pick six in the Super Bowl and, and misses the tackle, and the defender literally walked into the end zone with absolutely no problem. And I said, oh, no, this is this is going to be bad. And before you knew it, it was 21-3 to uh, by halftime. Now, a couple things. They, they, were, they, were, they were touting all the stats during the first half, saying that the biggest deficit to ever come back from was 10 points, and, and right now you, it was 21-3. to And, you know, it, it's one of those things when you play the Patriots – that the Patriots will they they play a very smart game in that they play consistently well and then they just wait for you to screw up. And when playing the Patriots, I understand the mentality of like you just need to keep your foot on the gas the entire time and you just need to pummel them. And and that's what I thought I was seeing. And if the first half Falcons showed up for the second half, that would have put the NFL on notice and been like okay, this is the new powerhouse team. It's going to be Falcons, Cowboys, you know, as those are going to be the top uh, NFC teams. But, I mean, coming out of the half, but but actually, before we even get to the half, let's talk about Lady Gaga. I thought it was a great halftime show, I'm not going to lie. I thought it was a phenomenal halftime show. There was drones. She jumped off a building, which was phenomenal. Uh, She also did lots of dancing and catching footballs and sang good songs. So, I got to say... I was a fan of Lady Gaga's halftime show. As someone who doesn't particularly watch halftime shows because I really just don't care, I was happy with this one. I was happy I watched. It was uh, it was good. And she didn't lip sync, which was one of those things that, considering she's like doing cartwheels and she's jumping off buildings and she's still actually singing the songs, 
Well, that's pretty damn good. I mean, Mariah Carey can't just stand there and sing the songs, but that's that's another story. But kind of fast-forwarding a little bit is that the Falcons came out again because they got the ball right after half, and they scored again. They were up 25 points. Now, even if you are the most diehard of Patriots fans, you had to think like, okay, this this is it. This is how we lose. We're getting blown out. We're, we're not going to get the fifth ring. I know, boo-hoo. Um, but... I mean, there, there was, I, I, I was reading ESPN, I think there was a 99.6% chance that the Falcons were going to win at that point, which is insane to think about. And there was no way that I thought that this monumental of an upset could have occurred because the Falcons' defense was playing very well. They were containing Brady. Brady was throwing for a lot of yards, but they weren't converting it into points. Um, but holy crap, man. The, that was the last time that the Falcons scored. They scored one one time in the second half, like the first like four and a half minutes in, and then they never scored again. And and Brady's final numbers, listen to this, it's 43 for 62. The guy threw the ball 62 times, 466 yards. The guy almost throws 500 yards in the Super Bowl, two touchdowns and a pick. Um James White had an amazing game, too. Uh, six for 29 on the ground, two TDs. 14 for 110 in a TD. Uh, a phenomenal game for him. And kind of just, I mean, that, that kid's got to be happy. He, he won the Super Bowl for them. So, but, but taking a look at that fourth quarter, the thing that everybody's talking about today is, and this is where, like, I, I can't really fault the Falcons that much. Everyone's talking about, there's about three and a half minutes left, a little above that. Julio Jones just caught a big, big pass after Devontae Freeman just ran over them. Uh, they threw like a little screen pass to him and no one covered him. And it's second down. They're in field goal range. They're up by eight. And they throw the ball and get sacked. Now, this is the fight. This is like the total hypocrisy. Because rewind the NFC Championship game 2014 with the Packers, and we're telling McCarthy, you got to keep your foot on the gas pedal. Got to keep your foot on the gas pedal. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Go for the jugular, right? He doesn't. Runs Eddie Lacy three times or runs him twice. Aaron Rodgers throws an incomplete. Seattle gets the ball back, and we know what happens there. Here, as I was just saying, that they have to bury the Patriots. They have to do it, but not when you're in field goal range. Like, I feel like the Falcon fans at that point wish they had Mike McCarthy as a coach. They'd be like, just just hand the ball off. Just hand it. It doesn't even matter if you get one or two yards. You give it to Matt Bryan, who was elected to the Pro Bowl this year, one of the most accurate kickers in the NFL. Let him kick a freaking 40-yard field goal, and you're up by 11, and the Falcons probably win the Super Bowl. But nope, you take a sack, Matt Ryan. You don't even throw it out of bounds. And then you get a holding penalty, takes you out of field goal range, and the rest is history. And and the fact that even the Patriots were able to drive down and score 16 points, they got two two-point conversions, was incredible. And that last drive with Matt Ryan, right before the game ended, like, he just looked out of whack. He made some amazing throws that game. I mean, he's 17 for 23. The guy only threw the ball 23 times. Like, Brady almost tripled the amount of times he threw the ball. Uh, 204, 2 TD. He made some MVP-like passes, don't get me wrong. Julio Jones, though, only 4 for 87. Tal Gabriel, uh, 3 for 76. It, they didn't run a lot of plays. Like, they did not have the ball for a very long time, and they didn't run a lot of plays. So I think the fact that they, they lost time of possession, even though they were kicking the Patriots' ass, they just... They they let the Patriots just kind of do what they wanted. And and I think they got complacent. That defense definitely got complacent. Um, but, I mean, it, it was like watching a Packers game unfold. Like, I I feel really bad for my, pa- my fellow Packer fans who also wanted the Falcons to win because, like, this had to be just, like, reminiscent of the NFC Championship game uh, from 2014. And, uh, yeah, it was it was bad. Because as, as soon as that coin toss was flipped and the Patriots got it, I said, the game's over. The game is absolutely over. And interesting enough, um, I, I, saw that, I saw that there were some comments about how maybe the overtime rule should be changed even further, that both teams should have an opportunity to have the ball. 
Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for the for the past two years, the Packers have been on the receiving end of losing on the first play, uh, the first drive of halftime, and there was silence. No one was complaining when the Packers lost. So guess what? It doesn't get to change. Because you know what? Here's the thing. I walked into this Super Bowl, and I was like, all right, whoever wins, it really doesn't impact me in any way, shape, or form. As I was saying in the previous episode on Thursday, I just hope it's a good game. And as the Patriots started coming back and coming back, I was like, you know what? I went back to the mentality, if I can't have nice things, nobody can have nice things. Just kill the Falcons. Just do it. And to be a Falcons fan and be up 19 points going into the fourth quarter and just to have that just crumble in front of you, I mean, I know what that feels like, but that's bad. Like, it, it's it's a it's a terrible feeling to do that in the Super Bowl. And, and maybe this is a stupid question. I have to ask those who are watching. Would you have rather the Packers lost in the NFC Championship game like they did or have the exact same thing happen to the Falcons like it did on Sunday night. I that's tough because I just don't I don't I don't think my liver my or my heart or my vocal cords could have taken another like uh, late quarter collapse. I don't I really don't think they would have been able to survive another overtime thing. Like I would have been done. I would have been absolutely done. Uh, so I mean I, I feel a little bit for Falcons fans. But you guys talked a lot of crap after you beat the Packers. So. I can't, I can't say that I feel that bad. Um, but yeah, no, I can understand that your fan base is hurting today. Absolutely. It's going to hurt for a while. I mean, you know, it's going to be like the Seahawks, you know, throwing it on the one-yard line, which the Patriots almost did, by the way. They Did we not call out the first play? He threw it, and Clowney had a hand on it. So that was uh, that was interesting to say. Not Clowney. Oh, my God. Uh, he had a hand on it and, it, and it almost was very, very bad for them. But Tom Brady gets his fifth freaking Super Bowl ring, which I'm jealous. As a Packers fan, I'm totally jealous. Uh, of course, everyone, is he the greatest of all time? I was having this argument with my my Patriots fan friend, and uh, I mean, he's 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 definitely up there. If he's not the greatest of all time, I mean, he's, he's, he's pretty damn close to being that. Um, I mean, just look at these numbers. I mean, 43-62, almost 500 yards. I mean, the guy played amazingly well. The one bad throw that he had, well, he had a couple bad throws, but the one really bad throw was the interception. And uh, I mean, listen, the Patriots have put together something that was has been incredible. And you know, my my hats off to them. And uh, and I have to, there's no hard feelings or anything like that. Um, I I wish that the Packers played around in free agency like the Patriots did. I mean, that's that's the one thing I can say because. I mean, again, this is now the second time that we've been robbed of a Rodgers Brady Super Bowl. I want to see it, but oh, man, I don't know. It, it it makes me feel a certain way because uh, I, the the Packers could be there. We have the quarterback. We just need to build the team around them. And uh, yeah, and that's what Rodgers means when he says reload. Are we gonna do something for agency? I have no idea. It'll be uh, interesting. Um, so yeah, this is the last breakdown of a game that we're going to do this season. Next week, I'm going to release an episode of what the Packers need to do in order to win the Super Bowl uh, next year in Minnesota, which please, that would be amazing. And I would just retire from everything. So that would be incredible. Uh, I'll do that next week. And then we're going to go on a little bit of a hiatus because now like we're in, we're in the dark zone. It's that there's no more football the rest of the season. And it just makes me, makes me very, very sad. We'll do some stuff with the draft, but... I'm going to miss you, football. And I, and I have to say, for a very crappy playoffs, I thought the Super Bowl was going to be crappy again. But it's it's going on that pattern of terrible Super Bowl, good, terrible, good. So, I mean, hats off to the Patriots and their fans. You guys beyond deserve it. And uh, hopefully we can play you for one one of these years, maybe even in Minnesota. Um, you can always find me at TomGrossyComedy.com, T-O-M-G-R-O-S-S-I Comedy, or TomGrossyComedy on a Twitter Podcast, P-A-C-K-A-S-T, which is this podcast. We're on SoundCloud, iTunes, uh, YouTube once a week. We're on Google Play Music. Check us out any one of those. We usually have the Tuesday, Thursday episodes. Thursday, we bring on the fans from the opposing team. Not going to happen this week because we, we're done. We're out of fans. We got no one to talk about. We're not playing anybody next week. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week for, like, the pseudo last episode. I'm Tom Grassi, And as always, Go Pack Go.